So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the new functionality for simulating trading and tracking portfolios that's been added in for pairs traders. Now, special thanks to one of the wizards who's a Forex trader who wrote into me to say, Sean, it's a no brainer to do portfolio tracking because it takes so much time to do it manually. Please look into it. And so I agreed to do that. And I even sent a poll out to the channel. 55 people did it. 73% of people came back and said, yeah, it's a no brainer. Please do it. So that is what we're going to cover in this video, how to play simulated trades, track them and download them into a spreadsheet that you can use for whatever purposes you like. Now, if you're not into pairs trading or statistical arbitrage, skip this video. On Sunday's video, I'm going to do an update in terms of the plan of attack for updating the existing Udemy courses. And on top of that, maybe we can talk a bit about DeFi tricks and some other things that we need to think about for the platform too. So with that said, let's get into some pairs trading. So let's assume that you've just hit the platform. So I'll go over here to the dashboard page and we go over to Zscore. Now, right now I'm on crypto. I'll show some examples on Forex, but I'm going to start here with the basics on crypto. Now let's go and filter on something like Half-Life. So I want a Half-Life that starts kind of low and is in this sort of range. That's what I'm interested in. You might have a different strategy. This is how I like to look at it. Right now, this one looks interesting. It's at an interesting Z-score. The back test looks pretty strong. It's had a pretty good sharp ratio. Might be worth trading. So I'm gonna go and hit this diamond icon. So now this diamond icon is new. You'll notice this is a new thing. Go and click on this and it will bring up a trading panel where you can go and place a trade. Now, this is a simulated trade. There is no real money. You do not need a wallet. There's no connection that happens. This is purely for paper trading. Now, you might say, well, maybe I don't agree with the price, so I want to change the number, etc. You can do that. All you need to do is go and click in here or here or here or here. Click anywhere you like and you can go and trade the simulation. You can go and come up with a hypothetical commission cost or spread or Z-score, etc. For example, I'm going to put a commission rate in here of 0.1%, which is like a typical commission for an exchange. And that is that. Now, in terms of the size, this is where things get quite interesting. What we can do here is stay in USD because both these coins are against US dollar tether. And I can convert using dollars. So let's say I want $100 of mana, that'll give me 250 mana, which I'm calling the base. So mana is the base, US dollar tethers the quote. Aid is the base, US dollar tethers the quote. So if I go here and say, okay, well, let's also trade $100 worth of ADA, you can see here that is saying 305 ADA is what I'll get for 100 USD. Fantastic. So now that I've got that, what I can do is select whether I want to go short on the pair or long on the pair. If I go short on the pair, that means I'm going short on mana and long on ADA. If I go long on the pair, it means I'm going long on mana and short on ADA. That's what these two means. And it comes up with a default for you based on whatever the Z-score was. So if the Z-score is negative, it'll default it so that you're going long on ticker one and short on ticker two. Now, a lot of traders might not like the fact that the size is being entered in terms of US dollars. So here you can switch this to base and I could say, right, I want 250 mana, which is about $100. So it'll flip it around for you, basically. Or I want, say, 305 uh, Cardano and that'll give me about $100 worth. So whether you like working and thinking in dollars or you want to work and think in terms of the crypto that you're either buying or selling, you can do either so far. But there is a catch to this. I'll show you later when we get into Forex. Let's tag this strategy because maybe this is to do with a strategy I'm interested in, which is a strong Z score in terms of how far along from zero it is. And maybe something like the half life, it's a low half life. So let's call this the low half life strategy. So I can tag any trade I do with any tag and then I can use that later on for analysis, right? So I'm going to tag this as my low half life strategy. If you're not interested in this, just leave it as default and the time frame that I found this arbitrage within. Let's go and place the trade. Excellent. So that's gone and place the trade. And you're probably thinking, well, where is the trade? I'm going to show you in a bit. All right. Here's another one over here that also wants to go long. So I'm just going to go and enter in some commission there and maybe I'll put in a slippage rate as well just to add in some kind of assumption for slippage. And again, I'll do, I don't know, $250 here and $250 worth there. I'll just save that as default and place the trade. You get the idea. Let's see if there's one where we may actually potentially go short. This one here looks potentially interesting. 
All right, the sharp ratio is terrible in terms of the back test, but let's just go with it anyway. So I'll go short on this one over here. Again, I'm gonna put in some kind of commission cost. You don't have to do that, or you can change the rate. This basically represents 0.01%. And let's see down here, I'm gonna, again, I'll do about $100 worth over here, and let's go and place that trade, excellent. Now, this one here on Forex looks particularly interesting. So we've got a sharp ratio of 1.1, and you'll notice that this USD is grayed out. And the reason for that is I'm doing USD to Swiss francs and Euro to Swiss francs. So in this case, my quote on either side is in Swiss francs. So general rule of thumb, always make sure you're using base unless the quote, so the USD is on the right hand side of both of these tickers. Otherwise, just leave this as base. And in fact, this will default to blocking you to select it to dollars if it can see that here there's not US dollars on both of these. But if you do see US dollars available, but they're not both to dollar, don't use this US dollar conversion. Don't trust it. Just go with entering in the amount that you're either acquiring or selling. So here in terms of USD, I'm going to be getting, I don't know, 100, which is 93 Swiss francs. And here I'm going to put in 100 or maybe, I don't know, let's put in 92. Here you can see I'm entering in the base, so 92 euros will give me 92.92 Swiss francs. So that's pretty straightforward there. This one here, we're gonna go long. Let's go and place the trade as such. Great. Now, where have my trades actually gone? Well, follow the diamond. So up here, you have your diamond. So if you select that, here you will see your trade, all right? So this is our Forex one. And if I flip it over to crypto, you will see here are my crypto ones. Just bear in mind, you need to check whether you're on open or closed in terms of what view you have, but that's how you do it. If I go over here to closed, you'll see there's no closed trades. All of my positions are currently open, for example, in crypto. So this is ticker one, this is ticker two, and this is a pair, this is a pair. If I double click on any row, it'll tell me what the pair is and what the return for each side of that is. So you can see here, one trade is down, one is up, the net is up. That's just a coincidence. I've only been in this trade for literally minutes. So take this with a pinch of salt in terms of the results you see here on this video. But that basically is how I can go and see, you know, what was the hedge ratio, the spread, the Z-score that I went in at. If I wanna see what the current hedge ratio, et cetera, is, I can just click here on that and it will bring up that pair there for me. Now, let's actually say, for example, that I only want to place a one-sided trade. I can do that. So here's our diamond now. We're on the custom tab, but we still have the diamond. So we can press that. And let's say I only want Cardano. So here I'm just going to say I want 100 Cardano. And I'm going to leave this blank. And I'm just going to go short that. And there you go. Now, what about closing a position? Well, it's as simple as just clicking on this, right? So let's say, for example, this one here. Uh, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, we're doing pretty well on this. This is this Aave and people. I'm going to go and close that trade for a profit. Now, if I go over to closed, you can see my net profit here. And you can see if you rewind the video, the actual net profit of these two here is slightly lower. So here you can see it's 0.5 or 0.6%. It's basically lower than it was when they were open because it takes into account the cost for closing the trade. So if you put a cost to open the trade, it assumes the same cost for closing the trade, which is helpful. Let's go back to open. These prices are live, right? So this is the current price that's being taken right now from the Binance exchange. And if I swap over to Forex and I refresh that, you can see these are actually live prices here. So when I go and close a trade like this one for Forex, for example, and I go back over here, you can actually now go and see that that has been locked in as the close price. One of the things you need to pay attention to is this metric down here is just to give you a guide for whether the sum of these is positive or not, or maybe what the average returns are. But you're dealing with different currencies in Forex, different size. This is going to be meaningless to you, right? What's more meaningful is actually having the data, then applying some kind of balance to it or putting it into whatever analysis you want. And so you can do that by just going save to CSV. And when you do that, it'll tell you, right, this is now available at Xtrader. So you click on that. It'll take you over here and you can click on the file. And here you can see all your data. You can do any manipulation you want to that data. Or frankly, if you want to just do it in Excel, just go and download that file as such. So here I can go and click open and open the file. So here's my download. 
and this has got all of the calculations and data on it. So this has saved me having to type all of that information out. And I hope that this has and will save you a lot of time. Now, bear in mind, if you go and make a change like saving that spreadsheet, doing things to the spreadsheet, you won't see those changes reflected here. This is all coming from a database. The spreadsheet is for you. It's for you to go and manipulate whatever you need to because different traders are gonna have different needs for what they want to do with their data. But the point is you can get the raw data very, very easily. And that's kind of what the point of this is. So if you're a newbie, this is probably gonna be quite useful for you. If you're getting your head around pairs trading, again, it's something you can practice with. And if you're a seasoned trader who just wants to go and collect data, hopefully, this will save you a bunch of time. Until the next one, take care. Talk soon.